Ms. Rahama Wright, it's such a pleasure and such an honor to have you uh, join our conversation today. And uh, we are talking about agripreneurs and you fall right into that category. So as we speak, you're the, you're the president and the CEO of Shea Lean. Can you tell us a little bit about your company and the product that you sell? What my company Shailene does is really simple. We help women take an agricultural product called Shea. It's actually, I can show you all, this is the seed. And contained in this seed is an oil. And contained in that oil is all these moisturizing and nourishing benefits for skin and hair. So what we do is we help women take these seeds, transform it into products like soaps, creams, moisturizers, that we connect to the US marketplace. And by doing that, we increase women's income five times their country's minimum wage, giving them a living wage for the very first time. So Rahama, you were a Peace Corps volunteer, and now you head this company, Shayeline, and your products can be found in some of the largest US retail stores, such as Whole Foods and Macy's. How did you get started? I started it because of the women, um, the African women who are part of this global supply chain. I'm African on my mom's side. And just seeing a lot of the disconnects between what happens locally in these communities and how that translates into the global marketplace, that's the reason why I started Shailene. You know, I often say I figured out how to start my business on Google. I would Google questions and it would take me down a certain path and then I would adjust. I would reach out to people, cold call them. And if I were to give anyone three pieces of advice or even two pieces of advice when they're first starting out their, their business, the one is just learn. Learn the industry that you're a part of. Understand what you're bringing to that industry. So for me, I knew about Shea. I knew that it was an agricultural product. I knew that it was something that women in Africa made, but I didn't know how to bring it to market. So I spent a lot of time learning about, okay, how can I get the right packaging? How can I get the right quality? Uh, and the second thing would be build your network. Absolutely. I would cold call people, send people, you know, messages that emails who didn't know me. But if I felt like there was possibility for alignment. I would reach out to people and building and cultivating those relationships over those years led me to getting my first round of capital, led me to getting my first Whole Foods account, which then gave put me in a position where I was able to get into MGM. And then last year is when we launched in Macy's. That is so awesome because you said that you learned it from Google and I'm sure a lot of women who are listening are doing the same thing. I was saying, oh, I guess it's not that bad, you know, getting free courses <laughs> to start a business. It's really encouraging. Now you say you're in Ghana right now, which is really amazing. And you work directly with women who are actually, you know, in the shea butter industry and you really help them to even come to the U.S. to see who they sell their products to how yeah. why did you decide to do that and help them come to the U.S. to see that and how is that experience I'm sure everyone here has a connection to Africa I'm just assuming and you know that oftentimes our community members don't have the same opportunity to see the world the same way we have been able to mm -hmm. and a lot of women who are in the agricultural space they are typically harvesters they're not creating value-added processed products that can connect to the marketplace. And so even though the supply chain starts with them, they're completely disconnected from formal markets. And they don't get a chance to be exposed to what it's like to walk into a store, see a product that they were a part of. And so that was really important for me. I wanted the women in our community to not only experience the market side and get a chance to walk into a whole food store, meet a buyer, talk to a customer, touch the, you know, the products on the shelf and see how people even interacted with the products. Because for me, if we're going to transform supply chains and transform the way things are extracted out of Africa, we have to give people the ability to see how big the market is and not only see how big it is, but also see that they are contributing to this very large market. What we're doing is not a handout. We're, you know, not teaching a foreign concept and bringing it into the community. These women have been making this product for hundreds of years, yet these very large foreign companies benefit from their labor. 
-hmm. It's not fair. And for me, this is about economic justice. You mentioned a lot about um, the efforts that you're making and um, how you're actively trying to change these women's lives. Um, how have the products themselves improved the lives of the people you have been working with? And how exactly do you measure um, that improvement? So for Shailene and for me, my goal is when I go into a community and I work with a group, if they are not making living wages, we are not making our impact. And that is the single, to me, the best thing you can do for a woman is give her access to more income and access to choices better choices. And so that's how we measure impact. So we start with looking at government data in terms of what is the minimum wage in this country? So that's published information, right? Anyone can find that. We then interview the women that we work with. What are you making now? What would you like to be making in terms of how much does it cost you to live? And you know that you're not just making ends meet, you actually have a little bit left over to save. And we collect that information. So women talk about the cost of sending their kids to school. They talk about transportation costs, food costs, electricity, access to water, all of those things. And from that, we've developed a multiplier of five against the minimum wage. And so the women that we work with, they're making more than nurses, they're making more than teachers, they're making more than construction workers within the, the, the country because of that multiplier of five. And when you ask, well, how does that improve their lives? It improves their lives dramatically. Some of the things we've been able to see women in our cooperatives do, not only the number one thing they do is ensure that their kids are in school. Like it doesn't matter if it's a boy child or a girl child, 100%. That's the one thing moms really, really care about this issue of educating their kids. The other thing is, is that they are able to invest in other income generating activities. We're not trying to create shape producers for the rest of their lives, right? We're not trying to have a woman be a shape producer from her 20s all the way till she's 80 years old. And a lot of women who work in shape are elder. They're older women who oftentimes are widows. So what we try to do is create a model where people are able to make enough money, more than enough money, so that they can do other things. And then that kind of term creates a cycle of bringing new people in. And then they're able to make enough money to do other things and then bring new people in. And so that's the cycle that we're, the cycle of change that we're committed to.